Hi, we're, we're two, two guys, guys from Sick of It All, and you're watching Pitcam. Hey, this is Gadi from Pitcam. I'm, I'm sitting here with uh, the guys from Sick of It All, and I'm so fucking nervous right now. Um, and now we start with the interview. Okay, all right. Um, guys, I mean, hey, it's 20 years in hardcore and all music. Almost 25. 25? Almost 25, yeah. Okay, so... Next year. Yeah. Next year will be 25. 25 years in music history. What, what a feeling is this? Well, it, I get free beers when I hang out at bars, you know? That, that's basically the perk, you know? And uh, now, I mean, we, we do have a really loyal fan base, and that's the reason why we're able to do it. And, uh, you know, I hope, it, it seems like they appreciate the fact that we've just kept it real, like just presented ourselves throughout it all, like never tried to do anything else besides be who we are and like just try to make the band as much as it can be, you know? We've never tried any kind of cheesy gimmicks or anything like that to sell ourselves and uh, uh, I think that's what the people in Europe appreciate about us. In America it's kind of a different story because they like the gimmicks more. <laughs> Is it true? It's kind of true. We still have a, a good fan base in the States but it's really small and the younger kids they want bands that are their age and they're not going to go out and seek any history about where you know where these the bands they like get their ideas from but who gives a shit yeah i mean that, that's the thing it's like uh you know when i was getting into the music i appreciated history i just had that kind of mentality and there are a lot of americans that also appreciate history and where the music comes from and they're the ones that are going to do the research and those are the people that come to come to see us and still like uh like sick of it all but uh a lot of the younger kids just might not have that kind of that kind of view of things. They might uh, look at things a lot more kind of surface level and not want to go uh, deeper than that. So, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, gain the, the appreciation of history at some point, but we'll see. The thing in the States, everything goes in circles. And it's like, at one point, we were opening for DRI in 1990, yeah, I think it was. And those guys were huge. Yeah. And now everything's really small, but now they're starting to play again and things are getting really big for them again. And it's like everyone gets their turn again because people are like, oh, wow, check out this band. And then it just comes back around. But that's the States. It's always been like that. But it's a big world and we get the to tour everywhere in the world, which is great, you know, and uh, Europe is one of the greatest places for us to play. But we get to go to South America and all these other places and be really appreciated. And then, like Armand was saying before, people see that we're ourselves on record where political and angry and real heavy and aggressive, but playing live, it's fun and it's kind of like a party. And that's what we want to put out to everybody. When you come to the show, just have fun, you know? I think that's what people like about us. Yeah, that's uh, all what's, uh, what's count on, to have fun and to, to, to appreciate the music yeah. that uh, the guys do, you see on, on stage, I think. Um, tell me something about the album uh, based on a true story. Who, who want to start? Uh, <laughs> I love the way it came out, sound-wise, it's perfect. The songs we wrote, me and Armand pretty much wrote all the music for the record. It's that's what when we write or when I write, I don't know about Armand, but when I write, it's it just comes out. And it's not like I'm going to sit down and write this song right now. When I try to do that, nothing good comes out. It just has to come to me like that. So songs like Death or, Death or Jail and Waiting, they just, they just came to me, you know. It, it sounds strange, but they, they do just come to me like that. And um, so it's, it's really coming from inside and from the heart so and uh you know i, I think to a madsen we got him to do the uh to do the record with us and he also did uh death to tyrants and i think we found our guy you know yeah. it's it's been so long you know uh searching out 
uh, an engineer that could actually make us sound the way we're supposed to on an album rather than, you know, because all the band's history, people have always said, I love the way you guys sound live, but on record, it's not really translating. So finally, we found a guy who understands what to do with us, and he's been able to capture that on the last two records. So, I mean, hopefully we'll be working with him constantly in the future, just because it seems like there's absolutely no struggle. He just understands what to do to make us sound the way it's supposed to. And uh, I think the latest record has been one of the easiest times making Sick of It All, keeping the Sick of It All sound, but introducing uh, almost kind of subliminal melody into the music where uh, the, the vocals aren't just all barked out. There is like a vocal line that kind of has some music to it. And... But, but, but it's not something so obvious. It's not something like you hear it and you're like, oh, that's a sing-songy part versus the screaming part, like so many other bands, but where, uh, where it's really kind of obvious what they're going for, like a, kind of like a commercial hook in the chorus, and then like the brutal parts are, you know, the verses or whatever. With, with us, it's just like we're going with the flow of, of the music and letting the vocals be what they are, uh, but at, trying to add something that'll kind of stick in your head, that will uh, will be a little hint of a melody, which is just enough to, for it to be catchy, but not too much for it not to be sick of it all anymore. That sounds good, awesome. Um, I got a question about um, what, what does it mean to you to play with Blood for Blood? I oh. mean, it's the first time yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, they play in for, I don't know, six years or yeah. seven years? Well, we have a history with those guys. We toured uh, in the States with them. And uh, when we toured together, it was always such a good bill. It was such a good lineup. It seemed like wherever we played together, the whole hardcore scene from that city would come out and uh, the shows would be great. The atmosphere would be great. It would be like almost dangerous, you know what I mean? And uh, and you know so we knew the guys for for many years ian uh the bass player he did our last two videos so uh you know we have like a history with him that that goes back and it's great to see him on stage again because it was such a shame to hear that they ever stopped yeah and i think uh it's, first of all it's great to hear the songs again live like even just warming up getting backstage and you hear them you have you have to go back out on stage to watch it and having billy do Rob's parts, it's great. He sounds great, you know? Yeah, we will um, excited because it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a difference between Rob's voice and then uh, the voice from Billy, but... Um, it's not that much of a difference. He, well, he, 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 sounds, he sounds great, his you style. You know, the interesting thing is that I didn't know uh, coming into this tour, when I first started talking to Ian about doing this tour together, uh, he told me that they immediately thought of Billy as like um, you know a, a back you know backup plan just in case Rob couldn't do it and ends up Rob couldn't do it, but uh, they said Billy was number one on the list because of the fact that Rob based his whole thing off of what Billy was doing in Biohazard, so Billy being the main influence for Rob, yeah. it, it just ended up working because he already was doing it for Biohazard for so many years, and actually. Uh Rob has been emailing Buddha, saying that he watches it on YouTube and stuff like that. He said it sounds great, so he's like, you know, he's into it. You know, he said he wish he could be there, but he can't be there. So he was giving him his blessings. Hopefully, at some point, we'll see like the the real lineup like fully back together again. Just hope that Rob could get his his act together. You know. I mean, it's it's uh, it's an kick ass uh, that, that Billy is, is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. here, but uh, yeah, hopefully you can see uh, the whole package, the real mm -hmm. whole package. Yep. Um, it's almost there. It's <laughs> almost there. <laughs> Tell me something about the tour. Mm -hmm. How was it to be uh, on tour? I mean, 25 years, you have played so many fucking tours. Mm -hmm. So tell me, is there a very embarrassing thing or a very worst thing happened ever on tour? <laughs> well, years. one time, uh, one time, Craig pulled my shorts off in front of the a crowd in Paris. That was pretty bad. For you? Yeah, for me. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. 
<laughs> Maybe you can sell the, the pictures on eBay for a few Not thousand sure. of dollars. Uh, it's too quick for anybody to snap up. <laughs> Do you got a, a funny story about being on tour? <laughs> that, that's always a tough one. Lou, for some reason, is the guy that can remember and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, funny stuff happens all the time. Right?